My dear parishioners, we read in today's gospel about two of our Lord's miracles. One of them, a woman just touching his garment, was healed from a serious malady. And then our Lord raises a girl, either from the dead or seemingly she was dead. After all, our Lord said the girl is asleep. In any case, it's a miracle. And there was faith being exhibited here on behalf of the ruler. Come and lay thy hand upon her, and she will return to life. The woman asking for even less than that didn't even ask, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. So I would like to speak about faith today and also because the saint of today, St. Gregory the Wonder Worker, in Greek that would be Thaumaturgus, he too was known for his faith and for his miracles. So it seems like the Sunday to really reflect upon faith, how important it is in our lives. I think that uh, consciously or even subconsciously, we too often lack faith. And one of the most antithetical words to faith is can't. And let's just go through a list of possibilities where we say can't, where we really should be saying with God's help, I can. Do we knowingly or perhaps subconsciously say, I can't become a saint. That's not for me. It's just beyond me. I can't. Or I've been struggling with this sin or fault for so many years. I can't overcome it. Haven't I proven that by all my failures? I can't resolve this problem or this challenge in my daily life. It's too hard to be a traditional Catholic today. I can't or I couldn't ever be a martyr. I can't be a Catholic in this day and age. It's too hard. You see, what all of those are predicated on is a lack of faith. Oh, for sure, if we rely on ourselves, yes, failure is inevitable. But when we're relying on the grace of God, keep reaching out for the grace of God through an ever deeper prayer life, then things happen that we never dreamed we could do. These can'ts in our daily life are also predicated on a low opinion of God's grace. We have too low an opinion of how powerful God's grace is. We're in good company, in a sense, because even St. Paul suffered this lack of faith. He who told us the most amazing things about faith. You have it in your very Sunday missiles. If you wanted to open to it, you certainly may. The, the Sexagesima Sunday, where St. Paul lists all of his sufferings and all of his challenges. But he gets to that point in his life, after having suffered all that, that thorn in the flesh, whatever it was, probably a grave temptation. And he says, dear God, please take it away. The unspoken message or unwritten message is, I can't do it. It's too much. And he tells God that three times, please take it away. I can't do it. 
And God says, no, I'm not going to take it away. And then he gives the reason, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. Never forget that. God's grace is and always will be bigger than any problem or challenge we could ever have to do the will of God. We also read, I believe those are the Latin words on that book that St. Francis Xavier Cabrini is holding there uh, in her hands, her statue here in the front on the epistle side. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. All things. Do we hear that word all? all? Whatever God wants me to do, I can do all things in him who strengthens me. We need to grow in faith. Our faith is weak. As I mentioned, today's saint is known for his faith, for his miracles. He had not, or very few saints, I can only think of two right now, that have the title wonder worker attached to their name. Saint Philomena, for one, and Saint Gregory, who lived in the early centuries of the church like her, but he was not living in the age of persecution. It was afterwards, I believe. But anyway, there's one story from his life that exhibits his faith. There was a mountain where he needed to build a church, and I'm not sure of all the details, but he was mindful of the fact that our Lord had said, and you can read this in chapter 11 of St. Mark's Gospel, about telling a mountain to move and move it by the power of faith. So here he had this very same challenge. And to make sure that he wasn't going to work this miracle through any selfish or self-centered or prideful motives, he fasted and prayed for three days beforehand. And then after that was done, he told the mountain to go, and the mountain was moved. Our Lord said if we had enough faith, we could do that. If it's necessary, if it's God's will. So praying for these things to happen is always based on if it's God's will, be it done to me, as Our Lady said to the angel Gabriel, according to thy will. But faith can move mountains. There are mountains, I'm sure, in all of our lives. I talked about some of them. These are the ones that we say when we see the bulk of them before our eyes, I can't do it. But again... That shows our lack of faith. I remember in 2008 when Father Alexander Kristoff was ordained a priest, he asked me to preach the sermon at his first solemn high mass. And I remember very well how I began that, that sermon after congratulating him, I told everyone, if you had told me 10 years before that a man from atheist surroundings would find the Catholic faith in communist atheistic Russia in 1988, find the one and only Catholic church that was open, and of course, continued to risk his life, going to, or beginning to risk his life and his welfare by going to this church, but finding a true Catholic priest that would baptize him. And on top of that, would find a vocation to the priesthood and not be ordained in Moscow or somewhere in Europe. But right here at Mount St. Michael, I would have told you it can't happen. My own lack of faith. But that thing that I would have said can't happen did happen. 
again, the power of God's grace. So how do we grow in faith, my dear brethren? I've told you how much we need faith. How do we grow in it? Again, the catechism gives us three simple steps. Pray for a greater faith. Like the apostles, Lord, increase my faith. Recognize how lacking at times you are in faith. You have to recognize that lack, otherwise you won't deeply and sincerely pray for more faith. Secondly, make acts of faith. I believe, especially when you don't feel like believing, especially when that can't comes up in your daily life. Say, I can, if it's God's will, by the power and grace of God. So in this sense, virtues are like muscles. You know how it is? You want to get strong, you've got to exercise your muscles. You have to do repetitive motion with heavy weights. That's what we do with virtue. If we have a difficult situation, we exercise a virtue, we're increasing the strength of that virtue by what we're doing, making acts of that virtue. So pray for a a greater faith, make acts of faith, and study your faith. Study what the Catholic Church has taught for all these centuries. Before Vatican II, of course, we don't, we we recognize the contradictions and modernism and problems of what happened after that. But before that, study your faith. If I may add one more thing, Ask Our Lady for a share in her faith. St. Louis Marie de Montfort explains this so beautifully in True Devotion to Mary, how Our Lady had more faith than anyone else, than all of us put together. I mean, think of the faith that she had to have to go through the passion and death of Jesus, see him tortured to death before her eyes, and just keep saying, "This this is being allowed by God. This is the will of God that the redemption happen in this way. So ask for a share in that most immense faith that our Blessed Mother had. She will give you a share in it. Let us not be like doubting Thomases. Remember what Thomas wanted, St. Thomas, before he really became a saint? Unless I see, I will not believe. So human to say that, and yet so wrong. Our Lord met his condition He showed him his pierced hands and feet, his glorified wounds in his hands, feet, and side. Blessed are they, Thomas, who have not seen and yet have believed. It is so meritorious to say, I believe when you don't see, when you don't feel like saying, I believe. I'll end with a couple of, well, three or four quotes here on faith that I've always found inspiring. And this is from C.S. Lewis. I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun has risen, not only because I see it, but because by it I see everything else. That's what our faith does. It's absolutely transcendent and transformative. To trust God in the light is nothing, but trust him in the dark. That's faith. Faith does not make things easy. It makes them possible. And confirmation of that in Luke chapter 1, verse 37. And my favorite here, David didn't need to know Goliath's strength because he already knew the strength of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.